Aloha. My name is James Leary and I'm with the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. And I'm here at Mao Organic Farm in beautiful Lualuale Valley. And today I'm going to share with you a new project sponsored by the Hawaii Department of Agriculture and their Agriculture Research Program. And this project is to evaluate native plant species that can serve as ground covers in organic weed management strategies. Being on the leeward side of Oahu, you'll see that the exotic species dominating this site include the grasses, uh, mainly uh, buffalo grass, and also woody legumes such as this kiave. The main mission of this project is to identify if any of the native plant species we've selected are able to outcompete some of the dominant species that are currently occupying this location. So we selected native plant species based on their abilities to grow extensive amount of biomass as a measure of competitiveness. Now we have four different plant species that were selected and each of these plant species represents a different functional group. First we have Naupaka, which is a bush type common in uh, landscaping along coastal areas. Second we have a legume vine functional group, which is the Nanea, the Vigna marina. And then the third one is the Peely grass, which represents our grass functional group. And Peely grass, of course, is well recognized as a, as a species utilized in restoring um, vegetations at Koholave. And the final species represents a sedge functional group, which is also a monocot. And this one is Ahuava, which is Cypress javanicus. Though we're on the drier side of the island, this area does experience winter rains, as we are today. You'll notice how these exotic vegetation really responds to the added moisture content. Now, this experiment did not go without the requirement of site preparation. But being an organic system, we were reliant on only a few techniques, including tractor implements, the use of a woven weed mat, and of course, hand weeding. But ultimately, our goal is to demonstrate establishment and occupation of native plant species being able to biologically exclude the reinvasion of these particular vegetations. So this is where we're going to be planting our native plants in this uh, uh, degraded site. A lot of rocks. Uh, what you can see is we do have the drip line down. But the problems we've been facing prior to planting is the site prep. And most, if not all, the site prep has involved weed control. To my left-hand side, we have a heavy infestation of grasses. And so in our first efforts, about a month and a half ago, we cleared out the grasses. And what followed was a heavy infestation of annual broadleaves, mainly mallows and spiny amaranth. So now we're moving to the next level of weed control by putting down woven black plastic mulch. As you can see, I'm utilizing the rocks, placing them on top to keep them from blowing away. Uh, so this is what we like to call ma'o pohako loa. So two days ago, I had to weed wax some really heavy spiny amaranth. You can see these woody stumps that were left behind. A really difficult plant to, to remove from the site. Uh, in an organic system, of course, we don't have the use of herbicides that would be really effective in this case. Uh, it got away from me because of the wet winter we're having. Nonetheless, I took it down. Knowing that it's going to re-sprout, this is where I decided to go to a black woven uh, plastic mat to try to block off sunlight and to inhibit any kind of regeneration. And so we'll leave this on for about a month's time and see uh, what kind of results we'll get from there. We're using six foot sheets with a one foot overlap. Now the wind direction is coming this way and so the overlap is such that this sheet is over top of this one so that when the wind comes over we don't have it catching it. And of course because of these uh, woody debris and uneven terrain we still have a lot of gap so we want to make sure that we have a nice seam and notice how we've used the heavy rocks to hold it down. So hopefully this will remain in place for the duration of the site preparation. Here we're in our bush type functional group and the native species that we have representing this experiment is the beech naupaka. Now, beech naupaka is well recognized as an ornamental you'll find, of course, at, at beachside parks. Uh, however, we're looking at it from a different approach, a little bit unconventional, but we wanted to see what kind of agronomic value this beech naupaka may have as an intercrop. 
The reason why we think this has attributes that are favorable is that they do produce a high level of biomass. And also the leaf surface is quite large, which is an ideal thatch component in weed suppression and soil cover. So as you can see, as mentioned earlier, that these are larger transplants. And again, a little bit un unconventional to consider an alpaca as an agronomic species. But as an intercrop, again, it has certain attributes that we really like. It will produce a high level of biomass. It does respond to hedgerowing and cutting. And so, and the other attributes are this larger leaf surface, again, as a, a real favorable component to a thatch that is used for weed suppression and soil cover. So here you're seeing where we have some wilting on the naupaka. This may be because of the size of the transplants that went into the field. Uh, if we were to do this over again, smaller transplants with lef less leaf surface would probably allow for better establishment. Though again, this has been several days that this plant's been in the field and it is no way uh, on its way to be being dead. And as we can see next to it, where we have a nice healthy uh, transplant next to it suggesting that we are not dealing with a moisture stress situation. Merely just the size of the plants causing us a little bit of trouble. Here we're in our legume functional group and our native representative here is the Nanea, the Vigna marina. Now don't be fooled by its size, these are smaller transplants, but I'll tell you what, we had to do significant pruning in the greenhouse prior to bringing them out because they are pretty aggressive. They are viney, but we don't know yet if they climb, but they don't have tendrils, so we suspect that it will still be fairly low growing, but very aggressive and controlling uh, and occupying the soil surface. And so we think this is gonna be a real favorable species. It is a legume, it does nodulate, and also will fix its own nitrogen. And then the tissues are a different texture than the other grasses and brush types in that uh, they're softer. So we suspect that breakdown will be much more prevalent with this species. So uh, it may provide us good soil cover and um, weed suppression, but I suspect also it's going to be a real attribute to uh, nutrient augmentation within this plot. So again, you'll see the, uh, the viney legume, the nanea, uh, we did do a, a significant amount of pruning before we transplanted just so that we didn't shock the plant. You know, they've been under irrigation the whole time. It's so now they have to get adjusted to this uh, harsher environment. But what I do notice here, what I'm very happy about, is lots of new bud break uh, from where the cut points were. So these plants are very well adapted. And like I said, it's probably going to be one of our more aggressive species in this uh, experiment. Here we're in the grass functional plot where Peely grass is our native representative. Peely is best known as one of the major conservation species for revegetating Kaholave. The Plant Material Center in Molokai has done extensive work on reestablishing seed banks that can be distributed throughout the islands. Now Peely grass is known as being very drought tolerant, which is why it's been very successful in the revegetation efforts on Kaholave. And we suspect that here in Waianae, where we have similar environments, that peely grass will also do very well. You'll notice how some of our healthier peely grass transplants are already starting to tiller and set flowers. Again, as a bunch type species, this is very favorable in this type of agronomic system where we'll be able to cut and windrow the biomass into the crop rows and that will serve as soil protection and also as uh, weed suppression at the soil surface. Here you'll see some of our healthier peely grass uh, transplants that are already tillering and setting seed. Now one of the more beneficial attributes of peely grass is that it is a bunch type species. So it will grow nice and healthy in the row but not encroach to the crop rows. And as this peely grass starts to be, build up biomass, we'll be able to come in and cut and windrow this thatch into the crop row to serve as soil protection and weed suppression. Ahuaba is a bunch type sedge that is commonly found in marshy areas and stream banks and has traditionally been used as cordage in house construction and canoe rigging. So here you're noticing a new transplant but again, the success of the transplant is evident with the new bud break that we're seeing on these plants.